He's in the thick of things and many are saying this is the semi-final before the final because this is the trade ministers meet at the G20. 36 nations together, 19 nations plus the EU 27 grouping. Piyush Goyalji, Namaste, Jai Hind, you must be over the moon. Oh yes, it's a very proud moment for all of us. Uh, I think the scientists of India have really done us proud. Uh, Everybody in the meeting was very excited. Every trade minister from across the world, from the largest economies of the world, has complimented India on this unique feat. And I think Prime Minister Narendra Modi's inspirational leadership, the way he encourages his team, the way he gets his team to get the best out of them, truly is a matter of great pride and satisfaction for all of us. With the timing, he's at BRICS. You are here leading the trade minister's uh, you know, delegation at G20 and then we have Chandrayaan. It, does it not really signal India's arrival on the global stage? I think it certainly signals to the world our growing relevance. India has arrived clearly on the global stage. The world is looking up to Narendra Modi ji's leadership today. He is the undisputed leader of the global south. He is the most popular leader in the world by every uh, standard or survey and more importantly leaders from across the world are recognizing that India with a demographic dividend with the fact that we have a very mature democracy the fact that we have huge demand given the population the fact that we have so much diversity, so much to offer to the world. These are drivers which are showing to the world India's potential in the future. I often refer to it as the 30 by 30 matrix. Our population is less than 30 years of age yeah. at an average. Expected to continue to be less than 30 years of age for the next 30 years. And in less than 30 years from now, India will add $30 trillion more to our economy, from 3.5 trillion to $35 trillion. So this is a sweet spot that India is in and which will be the foundation on which India will become a global power. A totally indigenous mission, uh, Piyuchi, I'm, I'm asking you this and I'm pressing you on this. It's because does that also take a story to the world saying we can do it at not just one-fourth or one-fifth the cost, but we can get it right in two times. It's uh, important to appreciate and that is something that uh, came out today where at least trade ministers from three countries and important countries at that have mentioned that they would like to talk to us to see how we can collaborate together for uh, space uh, technologies and space missions. In fact, one of the senior leaders uh, who's coming in for the Leaders' Summit next month, his trade minister has already said that they would like to add that to the agenda of the leaders' meeting with Prime Minister Modi. Fantastic. So, the enthusiasm for India's space mission comes from the fact that uh, we are self-reliant, from the fact that it's very, uh, very much a competitive business and we stand to gain from that competition. Also that we are a trusted partner. People around the world feel very, very connected to India. They feel they're at home in India. They feel they can trust India to not only perform, but also to perform diligently, efficiently and uh, honestly. And that's the paradigm shift in the India story that is holding us in very good stead. Because we saw NASA retrofit a lot of the technology they used for their moon missions back into many other things and then also used it for their manufacturer and trade cloud. You see India doing that, you know, af offering Africa nations technology of remote controlling deep mines, deep sea diving. Anand, why are you talking of the Africa nations alone? Of course we will support the African nations, but we will also support the Europeans, we will also support the Americans. India today stands tall and proud as a technologically enabled nation. I mean, I'm told that there are more than 5,000 engineers of Indian origin working in NASA. Yes. I'm given to understand that most of Silicon Valley technologies have an Indian element, a large Indian element. Most of the semiconductor design 
across the world as a huge contribution by proud Indians. So I think uh, now India is not considered by anybody to be a nation which uh, is anywhere less competent or less uh, able to serve the needs of the most discerning customers in every walk of life. See, Russia, China, India, nations who have also other nations along with India who have tried to become champions of the global south in the effort to try and break what they call the West hegemony. But who do these nations trust more? Well, very clearly, India is one nation which has demonstrated over the years that we do it truly for pr pr platonic reasons. We have, we have no vested interest. We are not trying to hawk uh, a particular initiative which will give us hegemony over them. We are not trying to impose our trading systems. We are not trying to impose our political uh, weight on other countries. And I think that's why India has earned the respect and trust of the developing world, of the less developed countries and the developed countries equally. India acts as a bridge. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's word carries weight. His leadership is immensely respected across the globe. Everybody feels very comfortable with him, very much at home with him. Uh, he is like a father figure to many world leaders. And uh, therefore, for the last nine years, I think he's been the most loved leader of the world, continuously, a feat which is nearly unparalleled hmm. anywhere else in the world. As host, you have West, the Western Bloc in one room, the Russians, the Chinese, then the African nations and the rest in the same room. How are you making all of them comfortable? Well, I think everybody recognizes that India stands for peace. Prime Minister Modi has been at the forefront of uh, making an effort to get all the nations on the negotiating table. He spoke that about this not being an era of war, spoke about dialogue and diplomacy being the way out of this uh, current imbroglio. And I think the trust that he has generated on all sides of the globe is what is holding us in good stead and helping us to steer the negotiations to come up with very robust outcomes. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind that the Jaipur declaration of the G20 trade and investment ministers will really be a roadmap for many, many years to come. The Prime Minister addressed the entire meet virtually this morning and some of the issues he touched upon, how was that received by nations, especially the first world nations, when he said that the developing nations should have the first right to use of resources, uh, trying to, and I think that's something which India is trying to do. The second point is to revive the dispute resolution group uh, or platform at the WTO, which kind of dominant since 2019. Prime Minister Modi's remarks were, of course, very inspirational, very well received and commented on by several senior ministers and leaders. Very clearly, he is a voice which is taken very uh, seriously by world leaders today. His words and comments are always very balanced and uh, I think his uh, point about the world's resources being used and global trade yeah. becoming an instrument of global good is something that uh, everybody agrees upon. And we hope that we'll be able to take this message from Prime Minister Modi into our discussions as we come up with an outcome document tomorrow and a chess text, as well as as we go into the ministerial conference 13, MC 13 in Abu Dhabi next year. I think uh, his uh, pearls of wisdom will hold all of us in good stead. No, I know you had a very critical role to play the previous round to get some outcomes out in the columns and I know there are a lot of midnight oil that was burnt. Uh, a lot of things which I cannot say on camera which happened inside behind those closed doors. But uh, dispute resolution seems to be one of the key aspects, uh, especially with the Western nations. It was led by America. We had about seven key disputes. Where are we with respect to resolving those? Because that was perhaps the biggest roadblock. Well, first of all, India always is 
out of the box in its thinking and approach. We had seven trade disputes with the United States of America at the WTO and long pending ones, some of them, and uh, issues on which we were literally at loggerheads for so many decades. I am happy that uh, with the collective efforts of uh, both countries and the leadership of President Biden and Prime Minister Modi, we have been able to resolve six bilaterally without going through any dispute resolution mechanism at the WTO. We have sorted out six issues. The seventh, we are in active negotiation to see if we can be a, a, two nations, two large, powerful, big nations with zero disputes at the WTO. It's going to set a new trend. In fact, the day we announced closure of six disputes, the Director General of WTO sent me a message hmm. that possibly this could be the pathway to a new dispute resolution mechanism in the WTO. But it needs a lot of confidence building measures. It needs you to trust each other and it needs a lot of political will of the leadership, which fortunately America and India are blessed to have. At the WTO, we believe that we'll have to ultimately have a functional dispute resolution mechanism. But we strongly believe that the basic fundamentals, the principles on which the WTO was founded, including a two-stage dispute resolution mechanism, Correct. where there is a place where one can go and appeal if you're not satisfied with the uh, findings of the panel, are a must and we will push for a solution to the dispute resolution mechanism. Mm. But certainly the solution will have to respect all the country's points of view and have a two-stage mm. mechanism. The political opposition in our country doesn't seem to have confidence in the abilities of the government because many, many times they say India is conceding far more. It is a give and go, but we are compromising on our interests. Uh, you, you know what happened with the uh, you know, levies with the US government. You clarified on it the last time we spoke. But there are concerns being raised that India's interests are being compromised just to get resolution on the table or just to get understanding done. You remember that old Hindi saying, Jo na samjhe, wo और जो समझने चाहते ही नहीं है जो समझने में जिसको कोई दिलचस्पी नहीं है और शायद जिसकी समझ ही कम है उसको हम क्या बैठ के शिक्षा देंगे इट्स अ वेरी सैड कमेंट्री ऑन सम ऑफ दिस ऑपोजिशन लीडर्स इंसिडेंटली मेनी ऑफ देम हैव प्राइवेटली कम एंड कॉम्प्लीमेंटेड अस फॉर द वेरी सक्सेसफुल जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी ऑफ इंडिया मैनी ऑपोजिशन लीडर्स हैव एक्चुअली एक्सप्रेस देयर अनहैप्पीनेस that their political party is politicizing such a glorious moment for India, such a proud moment for 140 crore Indians when we are leading the world's uh, most powerful organization as its president. The fact that we've been able to take G20 to nearly 60 cities now across the length and breadth of India. Today, every child in the country recognizes and f takes pride in the fact that India's voice is becoming a global voice, a voice of reason, a voice of sanity, and a voice of leadership. But uh, it's unfortunate that some political parties cannot grow beyond their current I, age. I, I'm, very current I'm very keen to know age. those names, Piyuji, so that we can go and ask those leaders <coughs> who are complimenting you on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, behind closed doors. But there are many. Anything. There are many who are complimenting us, and there are some whose ignorance uh, can just be pardoned because they never grew out, grew up in age. W would you agree to this argument that India was destined to become the fifth largest economy and it anyway was going to become the third largest economy? Well, it's, What's uh, been done is because of ISRO, why is the Modi government taking credit? Chand par to hume kabhi na kabhi jana hi tha. I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, thinking of a very weak leadership and a weak mind which believes that uh, destiny will decide and everything will happen on its own. I think uh, leadership, the actions of the leaders, the actions of government, the way you steer an economy in tough times, the way you inspire a nation's population to perform or even at times overperform, the way you motivate your team, the way you also give a compassionate uh, shoulder even in difficult times, and you saw that in the first time we attempted to land on the moon. Yes. Where Prime Minister Modi himself yeah, called it a success and gave encouragement to the then team. 
that we're going to be successful next time around. I think it's it's purely a play of leadership, purely a play of uh, accomplishment coming out of the sh hard work of 1.4 billion people. And anybody who belittles the efforts and the commitment of 140 crore Indians is actually doing a big disservice to the nation. There are, there are, of course, again, square questions that are many did not like the Prime Minister being on screen when Chandrayaan was touching down. They said spotlight has been taken away from ISRO. Uh, there are others who are saying, what's the agenda of G20 trade meet in Jaipur? It's with an eye on the Rajasthan polls. So, it's all being done with a larger intent to further the cause, political cause. You know, I've said this earlier that uh, when we won the elections in 2014 and then again in 2019, Prime Minister Modi very loud and clearly gave a message to all his uh, team members that now that the elections over, are over, we will be the government of the entire country, 1.4, at that time 1.2 crore, uh, 2 billion people, 120 crore people. And there will be no discrimination, everybody will have their due fair share of uh, benefits. There will be justice for all and appeasement of none. We have stood by that for nine years in government. Uh, we've, had, we've taken uh, G20 meetings to nearly 60 cities, as I said. Now, I'm sure Rajasthan is a part of India, as even the opposition will concede that much at least. And the fact that we are having it in Jaipur should be a matter of pride for all Indians. Mm. Because Jaipur, the pink city, is such a beautiful city. Every one of the participants who has come here is going back with a wow effect, is flabbergasted at the beauty of the city, of the warmth of, and hos of the hospitality and the courtesies that the local people are extending to us. Uh, I have publicly thanked the state government uh, yesterday yeah. in my comments for their cooperation and support. And I don't think we should politicize such international engagements. It is India first. Politics can have its own uh, run at the appropriate time. Koi collateral fayda milta hai, that's a different point, but that's not the agenda. Humne koi fayda nikalne ki koshish hi nahi In fact, aap ja ke sadko pe dekh lijiye ki kyon isme se fayda uthane ki koshish kar rahe. Lekin hamare karakter mein aane se inkar kar rahe. So you're jumping between bilateral. So I know you've given us very limited time. So uh, coming back to the agenda here for this meet. Uh, you're engaging, you had engagements with some of the Middle Eastern nations, you're speaking to the Saudis, to Oman. You even cut the cake of the moon cake was cut by two of the youngest trade ministers, one from Oman, the other from the Netherlands. So what are these engagements and what are the net takeaways from these conversations? Well, I think uh, as uh, our G20 theme itself talks about the world as one family, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, and the fact that we believe that uh, it is one earth, one family, one future. I thought it was very appropriate that India's Chandra and three mission success be celebrated by two young leaders who have a long road ahead of them, future leaders of the world, uh, one coming from the Middle East amongst all our friends from the Middle East, one coming from Europe, another set of countries where we have very deep cultural and historical ties. Uh, they were the two youngest ministers I could see there and I feel very happy that uh, our young colleague from uh, Netherlands and uh, Minister Kes from uh, Oman did us the honours. So I, I truly believe that's the signal that the G20 has given to the world that for us, our success is the success of 800 crore people. Uh, but I, I, I must tell you that uh, when you called the Russian trade minister, the Chinese ahead, there was some who took a step back among the West. So, uh, there is this entire, how are you able to manage that? And when we are engaging with these nations, does our equation with another nation come into play? I'm grateful to all the member countries, all the invited countries for their deep understanding and cooperation. It is a very sensitive issue. And, but they all respect the fact that India has been most fair, most balanced in its approach, and Prime Minister Modi's own efforts to be the harbinger of peace and harmony and uh, encourage dialogue to resolve this dispute. 
has been well recognized and respected by everybody. I think everybody participated in that spirit of camaraderie and I truly respect everybody said so final two or three questions one is conflicts how much are they hurting us not just the russia ukraine conflict what's happening in the middle eastern regions uh, in terms of conflict what's happening in our neighborhood with the chin state and the junta uh, and in the africa nations the impact of the boko haram and some of the other nations how much of this is hurting trade and our growth story i think it's hurting the whole world and india obviously is one of the largest or the largest country in the world will also get hurt and hurt significantly and therefore we believe that uh, we must work towards the democratic principles of equality, liberty and uh, freedom for all people. We strongly advocate uh, peace across the world and uh, at every effort India has been at the forefront of uh, bringing about stability in uh, governments and peace in regions. Mm. India has never been an aggressor nation. We have often suffered at the hands of aggressors. Even in the recent past, of course, as Prime Minister Modi said, we have suffered for over a thousand years mm. uh, aggression one after the other. But India is a resilient nation and I am confident that uh, with all these crises, all these difficulties, will only emerge stronger, better and work for the welfare of 140 crores. And like I promised two questions and I know I'm under time pressure. We had tomato prices soaring, now we've had onion prices and the government has stepped in. The unprecedented situations because the entire tomato basket had a lot of rain, onions. Are we looking at an impending food crisis uh, which is being pushed? I thank you for understanding Anand. Uh, I, uh, I'm glad that you appreciate that it is a once in a you know, Blue Moon story that all the uh, tomato growing areas had rain at the same time. Uh, in this situation, there was uh, a stress on prices, but Prime Minister Narendra Modi was on top of it. He immediately galvanized teams from uh, NAFED and NCCF to do something which has never been attempted in the history of India, of actually picking up uh, tomatoes, which is a product you can't even store. It has a very low shelf life and there is no storage mechanism and make sure that the availability of that could be augmented in areas where it was very expensive. Incidentally, it's almost ominous, but uh, about six months ago, we started thinking about what if there was a problem and uh, after a lot of deliberation with a lot of startups, on 30th June, nearly a month or 21 days before the uh, prices hit the hit, hit a crisis yeah. situation. Uh, 30th June, we launched a hackathon to find ways to uh, to store uh, tomatoes or process it in a cost-effective manner, and that is going on. We are given two months for people to come up with ideas. We are waiting till the end of July, August, to get those ideas. Same thing we did with onion about uh, seven eight months ago, and that process is work in progress. We've identified a few startups and innovators with new ideas and work is going on how we can expand the shelf life of onions. Tomatoes also one could look at dehydration but it makes it very expensive yes. and the Indian palate is still used to a fresh tomato, we are not comfortable with dehydrated goods. So there are challenges but uh, we have the confidence and courage of conviction to say we will always be there to support and resolve these crises. Overall, I don't see a food crisis as such. El Nino is disturbing and therefore we've taken very strong proactive measures to ensure availability of adequate food grains, foodstuffs, spices, all the products that we feel could come under stress given the erratic rains. August has seen very poor rain, though July mid had very good rains. It is expected that soon rains will once again touch different parts of the country like UP has started seeing rains, which is good for UP. So we'll, I think on balance, we are okay. We'll, we'll come out winner. Finally, sir, coming back to this trade meet, what is the one thing that you want in that combined statement? You think geopolitics is going to affect the statement more than trade? I think uh, there's been a fair degree of convergence amongst all the member countries and invited countries to come up with a outcome document, uh, come chase text where on all trade issues, there is unanimity. 
whether it's digital trade, trade facilitation, uh, logistics related issues uh, which affect trade, WTO reform and uh, newer elements to be discussed at the WTO. Resilient and uh, global supply chains becoming more uh, transparent and uh, uh, stronger. So I think there's full convergence on most of the trade, or, or rather all trade issues. We certainly have uh, uh, the issue of the conflict in Ukraine which will have to be appropriately addressed. Piyuchi, always a pleasure thank you, uh, speaking with you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Anand. Thank you. I know we are a little rush, but thank you so much for making the time. Thank you. Thank you so much.